Ponder this, if you will. A convertible with 640 horsepower. Or let me put it to you a different way. 640 horsepower in a convertible. Not entirely practical, but it's good to be the king. So we didn't try this last time, but being we have a second bite at the apple, and now a perfect road for this, why don't we do it now? Although I'm gonna ask, please don't tell anybody. Let's go here, here, okay, that's Sport Plus. Spoilers are extending, brake stand. Mr. Fantig, Michal. Holy shit! Oh my god, this thing is so f File this under the heading of, and you thought we covered absolutely everything there is to know about the rear spoiler for 992 Turbo. Apparently, we were wrong because if you've been paying attention, that is not the same rear spoiler as the Carmine red car we drove. Uh, you see, this is the standard fitment spoiler, the car we drove in the Carmine Red episode. That had the sport design package, which changes the shape of the spoiler and has the body color on the bottom and that carbon fiber reinforced polymer gloss black on the top. I think that's part of the Porsche exclusive manufacturer, but that's a whole different kettle of fish. But all of the functionality is the same between the two. They still take in 16 different pieces of information to change the height and the angle of the spoiler, and that results in eight different programs. Here's an idea. Let's go back into Sport Plus and see if we can hearken the gods of steering because this is an ideal place to do it. And when you get an opportunity in the Carmine Red Coupe, and oh, you can already tell a difference. Uh, you see, when you push this thing more aggressively, you can understand the difference. Adjusting how much input you put in the steering is really what you have to adjust. Now, can I sit here and honestly tell you that there is a 6% difference, as Occam has told us, with this system as opposed to the basic car? No. You and I are doing this a bit backwards because we're driving the 992 Turbo Cabriolet before we are driving the 992 Base Cabriolet. And what we're about to discuss applies to both. So you know how a fabric convertible roof, they're made up of at least the structure of bows. That's not the case here. Uh, the idea was they wanted to keep the line as close to the coupe as possible. And the way in which they did that was use four magnesium panels instead of bows. I'll let you be the judge if they were successful as it looks like a coupe, even though it has a fabric top. But what's more interesting to me is the mechanics behind it and that there are no hinges in between each one of those magnesium panels. They use one hydraulic unit that pulls two leads. Those leads, they go on each side and they literally pull the roof back in like a Z folding pattern, but it folds the roof and the total height is nine inches, which is particularly interesting when you think that the first part of the magnesium or the first magnesium panel here becomes the tonneau cover. Uh, I have to say the integration Porsche, Mercedes, those folks do is really second to none on convertibles. And being this is a German convertible, that would also indicate that the roof can go up or down while the car is in motion. It takes 12 seconds. And what they do is they limit it to 31 miles an hour. Not many of you know this, but I have owned a lot of convertibles in my time. And the cars that weren't folding roofs, they had some sort of like a Targa roof or a sunroof option. And as such, I am not the guy that switches on the air conditioning uh, when I have the roof down. But apparently the folks at Porsche feel otherwise, at least the kind of people that are gonna buy this are going to use the air conditioning. 
So they've beefed it up. Not that it's a bigger compressor, they've changed some of the functionality. So with that, let's go into the climate control. And please, if you're gonna change anything, can you give me just like rotary knobs for the air conditioning? You got these beautiful toggle switches, like airplane inspired. If we're gonna do this, th this is complex. You know, especially now, I'm really a fan of simple systems inside of cars. But anyway, I digress. Let's go into the compressor is now on. And let's put the fan up. Well, at least we have toggle switches here. Can I honestly tell you that there is a difference? No, I'm not that much of an aficionado of doing this trick, but from what I understand, it adjusts the programming and it knows when the roof is down, so it provides more air conditioning when the roof is down, which goes back to what I said originally, I'm just not that guy to switch on the air conditioning with the roof down. As of late, you and I have been geeking out about those flash 48 volt electrical systems that we see in those like near AMGs, uh, Boeing 787s and Airbus A350s. Can't say that's the case here, but I did find a unique part of the electrical system. The battery, it's not lead acid. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery. Try to say that fast three times. Uh, and Porsche, they say a couple of things about it. Uh, number one, they say it's two and a half times the battery life. They say the cycle stability is seven times that of a lead acid battery. And I think the biggest thing is the footprint is 20% smaller. Now, what does that mean to you and I? Uh, remember that whole lightweight glass discussion we had where it's like an eight pound difference? This returns over 30 pounds. So it goes from 60 pounds from a lead acid battery in a regular uh, car down to 28 pounds for this one here. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, but then we have to go back to that debate of, you know how the car, not just this, but a lot of cars nowadays, they turn off the engine at the light, at least in eco mode in this case, no eco mode here, but there is a normal mode. Now, I like this. I don't know why you guys have a huge problem with this. I, I'm a big fan of this, maybe because I'm a cheapskate. But the point of this battery is to do more stop-start cycles without as much load on the car's internal battery. Let's try something a bit different based on the fact that this is an almost 3,800 pound car. Specifically, it's 154 pounds more than the already somewhat weighty coupe. So knowing that information, let's go into Sport Plus and how aggressively can you push it? And the answer is pretty aggressively, and it really isn't just one thing that's communicating to me through this car. It isn't just the steering, it isn't just the suspension setup, it isn't just the extra power. It's a combination of all of that. It basically speaks confidence. Now, is it an Elise? Absolutely not. Like, I do feel I need to scrub off some speed in corners where I could go maybe not faster in an Elise because you're not carrying as much speed with a car like that, but you feel you can take corners faster in that lighter, smaller car. If I'm really reading the tea leaves correctly, what's going on here is a lot of science underneath this car, plus the extra power that kind of takes away that extra weight and enables you to go around a corner like this faster. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's, you know, in the last 992 Turbo episode, I called it magnificent. This one's also magnificent, but let's call this one stupendous. Uh, the 2021 911 Turbo S Cabriolet, otherwise known as the 992, for a base price of $216,300. Uh, to that we add Carrera White Metallic, which I will uh, tell you is the hardest color to shoot of any car we shoot, no matter the camera, but at least it's free. Then we move on to the Cabriolet roof in red, which really does look good with a white car. Uh, that is also free. Uh, then there's the leather interior, which is a two-tone. It's black and Bordeaux red. That is also free. We are off to a great start. Uh, then we add the 911 Turbo S logo and the rear that is high gloss black, like the coupe. That is part of the Porsche exclusive manufacture. Well, I shouldn't say package, more a system in customizing your car. That is $270. To that, we add the eight-speed Porsche Doppel coupling Getriba, which is free. And then, like the coupe, Power Steering Plus, optional on a $216,000 car, 
$280. The front axle lift system, which really shouldn't be optional because it will save you a lot of money in the long run, more than the $2,770 option price. Uh, then there are the 20-inch wheels in the front, 21-inch wheels in the rear, the Turbo S wheels. These are the base wheels. Those are free. Then we add the LED matrix design headlights in black with Porsche Dynamic Light Systems. Why the light thing is part of Porsche exclusive manufactura, I have no idea, but it is one hell of a party trick. Gotta say, you gotta have it. $750, the surround view system in the back. I'd like to point out that Hyundai's have this as standard. $1,430, lane keep assist. Uh, with traffic sign recognition, $1,200. Also, I'd like to point out that's standard on like a $50,000 Lexus. This is 200 grand. Uh, then we go into the lane change assist. That's $1,060. Adaptive cruise control, $2,000. I'm starting to have a heart attack here with why this is optional. Then we go into some good news. The adaptive sports seats plus with memory package, 18 ways, that is free. Uh, then we move to the ventilated seats, which were not on that coupe that we drove, $840. The heated steering wheel, like on the coupe, is free. Then we get into my favorite option in all Porsches and all Mercedes, the Burmester high-end surround sound. That is $3,980. Put another way, that's about the same price as buying a low-mileage, good, used electric car. Then something I'm starting to see in Porsche, which I like a lot, uh, included in the first year or 10,000 miles is the maintenance. That is free. Then we move on to the shipping and handling, $1,250 for a total retail price of this stunning Carrera White Turbo S convertible, $232,730. By now, you guys are well aware that I am an aficionado of all things party tricks. There is a very cool one here, and to play around with it, let's go back into normal. Uh, and you know how most cars nowadays have TFT screens? This is no different. There is a TFT screen on either side of the thankfully still analog and still, I would argue, mechanical uh, tachometer, which is a religion in the Porsche world, the Undonk. But the TFT screen over here, you can go through different gauges. There's obviously the gas gauge over here, but this like sort of middle one, you can go through uh, all wheel drive gauge, G-force gauge, uh, a repeater for the sport chrono, that kind of stuff, a map. But let's get into the tire gauge. Now they've got a tire pressure gauge. That's nothing new for 911s or really for a lot of cars. But here, it's also a tire temperature gauge. So when you first get into the car and you go like, wait, now I'm going with 35 miles an hour. Let's get it down to uh, below, okay, so yeah, 15 miles an hour. At 15 miles an hour and above, it starts to take the temperature of the tires. And when the temperature is cold, it shows little blue lights on each tire. And then as it gets warm, it gets to the gray you see now. I don't know about you, will I use it? Probably not a lot. Maybe for track days, would I take a $200,000 car, a convertible at that, to a track day? No. But that, I think, is flash. If you're paying attention, we've now done two 992 Turbo episodes, so it's probably a good idea to focus on the interior. Now, in my defense, there is a method to my madness as to why I've put this off for so long, because we already discussed this 14 months ago. There really isn't a lot of difference between the interior of a 992 base car and a 992 turbo. That said, there are some. Like, for example, there's more stuff fitted as standard, like the full leather interior. Or if you are an aficionado of a 930 turbo, this interior will look familiar to you because they've adapted that stitch pattern to this 18-way seat. Now, really, what we got to focus on is the Porsche exclusive manufacturer. We've talked about that in now two rounds of the options game, one with the Carmine red car, and then this white convertible. It's not just like gloss black badges. It is a process, an approach where you go to where you buy a Porsche and you say, hey man, I want to customize my car. I want to match the interior of the seats to my belt. Or they do have like 
uh, I don't want to say standard, but they've got these suggested two-tone systems that are kind of off the shelf, but you can make it pretty much anything you want. If I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, this is not exactly the same as Bentley and Rolls-Royce where you could literally do anything you want depending on how much of a check you want to write. I think there are some limitations. I don't know exactly what they are, but think about this. We've covered two options game where both of them are $220,000 and $230,000. If I were getting a car like that, I would absolutely want to make it the most bespoke suit I could ever make on four wheels. So uh, back to our regular scheduled program, and oh, by the way, the roof goes up, it's very quiet on the inside, and it, uh, it works. You and I have practically shot a mini-series on the 992 Turbo when you think about a tech review, a full first drive review on the Carmine Red Coupe, and now a full first drive review on this Carrera White Cabriolet. And what sticks with you after all of that is the level of performance. It, it's otherworldly. Like, what, five years ago, you and I drove the 991.2 Turbo, and I told you that car was a spaceship, and it is not just because of the output, the all wheel drive system, chassis control systems, or Porsche engineers doing what Porsche engineers do. It's, it can arrive at a level of performance that very few other cars can, but it does it very easily. Where a GT3, the one I would prefer, I actually personally would get a GT3 over this, it makes you work for it a bit more. It's more analog, this is more digital. That, that's really the difference. But here, as we go into the 992 generation of turbo, we go from that level of performance here to here. Now my only question is, where do we go in the future? What room do we have left? Because the reality is, it's already crazy fast. It already accelerates and does things that previous cars couldn't. But now maybe efficiency is a thing. Maybe, like I told you in the tech review, we're missing the electrification. Maybe that's the next frontier with the 992 Turbo, what will become the 992.2 Turbo. So let's open this up to speculation. Where does a 992, whether it's dot one or the coming dot two in a couple of years, where does it go? What is still left in the, the frontier of this type of car in the Porsche Pantheon? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Once again, thank you for joining me on this return to driving cars with you. Uh, I look forward to sharing more of my guest hosts with you, as well as more episodes with me behind the wheel. Until I see you next time, bis später.